Hey YouTube, in this box right here I got an upgraded audio system, well head unit for a 2012 RAV4. <coughs> it's the AVH W4400 NEX, it's supposed to do wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, some of the stuff in the box, here's the bypass, the brake bypass, apparently you can't just ground out the uh, parking brake wire in the head unit so you gotta use one of those. Uh, what's this? Oh, this is just a wiring harness for the for the factory wiring. Um, here's the steering wheel control interface. I'm hoping to keep the factory steering wheels as they are. Factory steering wheel controls how they are. And here is a um, a harness meant for that, so you, I can just connect it in without uh, having to splice too many wires. Um, this one's a USB converter, so you can use the stock. USB wires or USB connectors in the center console and then I got here is just the RCA cable I'm gonna chop one end off and connect this to the factory factory video signal in the in the passenger kick panel I think that's where it is um, we'll find out that goes up to the rear view mirror so I'm gonna try and keep the rear view mirror camera working and have the backup feature work on the head unit you have to connect the reverse signal wire and the uh, and this wire um, from the factory factory radio or factory um, backup camera uh, and here is the dash kit <clears throat> this is um, the surround for the uh, for the unit itself so hopefully this guy makes it ni look nice in factory I saw another one that Crutchfield had and it looked uh, not as nice as this one it didn't look like it matched the, the trim of the inside, but we'll see. I'll let you guys know how it looks. The harness all wired up, and I got the bypass in there too. So that blue wire goes to your uh, remote, black goes to ground, and the green goes to the parking wire. And I've got everything shrink wrapped. I'm gonna put some wire loom on it, like the fabric kind, but uh, I have one more connection to make, and that's the reverse gear signal input which is going to be made on the car itself and I'm not sure where it is yet so I'm going to have to figure that out by using the multimeter and, and uh, searching it out that way but it should be on one of the harnesses that heads to the uh, factory factory radio but we'll s thing to note about this bypass is, is it says not to use any kind of connector like a scotch lock or a posit tap kind of thing because uh, those introduce extra resistance into the system and I think this relies on some kind of trickery like that, so I just got it wired directly in. Guys, okay, so we're in here in a 2012 RAV, and I'm gonna be upgrading the head unit from this uh, factory guy to that Pioneer wireless Android Auto and CarPlay unit. And I'm gonna try and retain, well, I'm gonna try and, you see that little thing up there in that uh, overhead console, the little three lines up there, that's like the microphone grill because the factory microphone we just can't use. And um, down under here, I'm going to have to go underneath that panel and look for the uh, signal wire for the reverse camera. Because this car has the reverse up here, but um, I want to put it on this one as well. So I'm going to just try and tap into the signal down there and then run the RCA to here and use a uh, reverse signal wire that's somewhere behind the head unit, hopefully. And... Uh, First thing, we're gonna disconnect the battery and go. Battery is disconnected. I just took off the negative terminal here in the engine bay and just stuck it off to the side over there. And hopefully it doesn't go back to its home position and, and reconnect itself on the, the negative terminal there, but looks like it's gonna be stuck in. So I'm gonna try and get behind this radio and see if I can find the best path to run the wires. Cause I'm gonna try and get the wire run all the way up here. I'm probably gonna go down the pillar there and um, underneath instead of going through the driver's side because uh, underneath the driver's side there's a lot of wires and a lot of convoluted stuff under there. So I'm gonna see what's the best, best path from behind the head unit because maybe the driver's side might be the best thing to do. But in order to do that, I'm gonna take off this plastic piece here with a trim tool and on the other side over here as well. And then it's super easy to pop up there. It was just uh, just pry up from the bottom. And this side I just got the hazard light dangling there. And if you have a four wheel drive version, then you're gonna have the locker button over there but I don't have that so yeah let's get this thing head units held in by these four screws there's two on this side and two on the other side I'm gonna just undo those first and then we're gonna unplug the wires I have a telescoping magnet or one of those sticks with the magnets attached to it it's gonna make getting these bolts out a lot easier because this 
a little bit uh, hard to get in there with your finger. So I just pulled it straight out. It's attached by clips. After you take out the four 10 millimeter bolts, you just kind of pull straight back out from there and it'll detach from the AC vents out a little bit, make it a little bit easier. You just pull it straight forward. It's attached by clips in the back like this, this again. And the reason I did that was because I was letting this thing rest down there and it's scratching up that little piece down below. So don't. All right, so we got the radio out here and you can take a look at the factory plugs that are behind here. The leftmost plug was that this guy right here. Looks like an antenna or something like that. Then there's this plug and this gray guy right there. And there's this and here. So I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to need to reuse. Some, some might just go dangling there. Some might be for the steering wheel controls. I'm not 100% sure yet. So we're going to have to find out. And I'm trying to see what's the best access methods down each side over here to run the wiring for the camera and for the mic. Is this a regular antenna or is this a GPS antenna? I'm not sure. I've got to read the instructions. So it's the AVHW 4400NEX and it comes with a remote. This looks like some kind of faceplate carrying case or something like that. Some hardware probably to install for the faceplate and some wiring here. I mean labeling for your wires or ports. I'm not sure why they're different or what but maybe only one port works for carplay the other one works for android auto not sure at the back you see that gps plug right there i think that's for that antenna but i don't think this thing has navigation built in so i'm not even going to bother connecting that i'll connect it back up if i need to but i don't want to run it if i don't have to and it says that there's some kind of extra pioneer navigation unit that you can use to plug into this guy but we'll see so three of the the harness plugs that i'm going to attach into the pioneer um they're already wired up yeah sorry it looks a little messy I'm going to clean it up, wrap it better with uh, some harness tape when I'm done. Uh, I just want to test all the connections, make sure they're all good. Anyway, this one over here, I think that's the steering wheel controls. Uh, it's going to go to um, this other little harness down here, which goes into the, the access box. Right? This guy. So hopefully it just works right out of the box. I don't have to do any weird programming with it. And uh, these other connectors... They go to the back of the head unit. So I got this guy right here is going to the back of the head unit. And this other one over here is going to the back of the head unit as well. So I got them plugged in. This is the factory audio ones, I believe. All the colors pretty much is matched up directly. And uh, this is the steering wheel control. So I'm not sure. Maybe inside here is a, a reverse wire I can tap for the reverse camera. But we'll, we'll see. And I'm not sure what these other plugs are for. So oh, oh maybe that's a USB. I don't know. We'll see. I think I have an adapter for that. Uh, where's that other one? Is that it? Oh, okay. Let's see. Here we go. That's that. Um, here's the USB connector. So it's going to plug right into that, that end over there. And this will just plug to the back of the head unit itself. Perfect fit. Snapped in there nicely. So that's going to connect to this USB plug here. And that runs down to these uh, center console USB port or that USB port over there. So Hopefully I can use that one to plug in and charge and use Android Auto and stuff as well. And uh, hopefully we can get that aux input working too. I think that has something to do with the uh, steering wheel control, but... These RCAs right here, I believe this is for the uh, auxiliary input for the, um, for the Pioneer unit. And it connects all the way up to that, that large connector over there. I'm not sure what this one is. Looks like that looks like an antenna to me, but I'm not sure how that's supposed to plug into the back of my head. Kind of sitting over here, it looks like for that antenna to work, I'm gonna need some kind of other harness adapter over there. I'm just gonna have to rig something up. But anyway, I'm gonna just try this. Uh, plug the battery back in. I got the steering wheel control box just kind of dangling over here. I don't remember what those wires are, but those are coming off the steering wheel controller. Uh, I'm not gonna hook them up if I don't have to. I think there's something like a parking brake wire or something like that. I don't know why that needs to be connected, but uh, it has it there. So I'm gonna plug the battery back in and we'll see. It's got power. I'm gonna stick the key and see what happens. All right there, something's happening. It's powered up, the plastic's still on top of it. Let's see if it works too well. Gotta take the plastic off. Just like I thought, uh, there's no antenna signal, so I can't get anything off the radio here. But I'm gonna try and do Bluetooth and see if I can get it, get any sound to come out. My my uh, speakers, all of them are playing something out of it. I can hear static coming out of it, so at least I'll, I know all the uh, 
connections or something there. So we'll see what happens. All right, the glare on that screen kind of sucks, but actually the speakers sound really good. It sounds better than the factory unit. The speakers in this, this car were actually not bad to begin with. But yeah, you can see right there that angle that that screen is hitting, it really sucks for glare. But it touches okay. I mean, like it's not a capacitive touch. I think it's a resistive touch, but it, uh, it still works fine. And it's pretty snappy, so I'm pretty happy with that. But all the sounds coming out of the speakers fine using uh, Bluetooth audio. But uh, I haven't tried connecting the Android Auto to it yet. But I just wanted to make sure that all the speaker connections were all hooked up fine. And let's just try the steering wheel controls. Uh, well, that thing's on, so I'm not sure what I got to do for the steering wheel controls, but that doesn't work. So we'll get that buttoned up and figure it out. I think I got my path for where I'm going to run the wires. You see down through here, this is the glove box. And in order to get the glove box off, you just kind of have to squeeze in a little bit. And this will drop the, the top part down. So you just squeeze it inside and it'll pop out. But from under here, you can see it goes all the way to the... Uh, the cavity back here and I'm gonna have uh, some space to get to the wiring that's going for the reverse camera behind there too so I'm gonna leave the, um, the extra USB cable inside here the um, anything else that that's hooked up to the back for now that I can't get hooked. the uh, everything plugged in that I can I don't have the antenna adapter yet uh, I got the bolts in just plainly the gap at the top is okay, it's a little bit wider than I'd like it, but uh, it's not too bad. Snapped in okay down at the bottom, and I'm just going to tighten everything up and give it... Down here I got the I got some of the wires dangling. Um, there's an extra USB port, the speaker wires, and the reverse camera RCA that I just got dangling under the glove box. This is how she's sitting right now, I just got everything buttoned all back up, so just to give us an idea of what it looks like for now. You can kind of see the, the fit and the gap or whatever. And the material matches okay, I guess you can kind of see. It. That's the difference between the, the factory and this. But the quality is not too bad. It fits okay inside there. So let's give it a let's fire this thing up and see how it does. I can't get the steering wheel controls to work. So I don't know if, if something's not connected. I didn't, I didn't hook up a reverse wire or or the parking wire. So you gotta use that up there for volume and whatever. It's like these buttons don't work yet. I'm not sure if I gotta do something different while I'm to try and program it, but I have two wires that are disconnected on that, that harness. So probably that might be not sending a signal to turn. All right guys, so here's all this. So I got that bypass, that modulating bypass thing installed and it, it works on here if you don't put the GPS antenna in, but then you're going to get a GPS antenna warning. Now the, the workaround with that is to upgrade this to the latest firmware. I'm not even sure what firmware is running on top right now, but it's supposed to be, you have to upgrade it to 1.01 .01, and then there's a, a demo mode kind of thing you can put it in so that it just bypasses it automatically. All you have to do is connect the parking brake to, to ground like you, you would like the older kind of uh, parking brake bypass kind of things. And and you don't really need that that extra extra piece that I put in there. You can just you can totally get rid of that. But I'm gonna keep it in there because uh, in the future they might release another update for this unit. And I've already got it wired in fine, so I don't want to undo it. And it was only like ten bucks anyway. But if they release an update in the future, like an updated firmware, and I need the bypass, uh, I don't want to have to take this thing apart again. So rather than just return it to get my ten bucks back, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep it in there. But to all you guys right now, you don't you don't have to with the 1.01 firmware apparently. You can bypass it without buying the extra piece. Just got to connect the green parking brake wire from this to ground, and then uh, I'll show you guys uh, the process to do the mo the modification to the unit. So it'll just do video in motion and all that kind of stuff without doing anything extra. All right, so it's kind of hard to see with the glare over there, but uh, this is actually on firmware 1.0. Let's see if you can see that, yeah, firmware 1.0. So I'm gonna, I got the USB loaded up already with the 1.01 .01 and I'm gonna start the update process. Here's where I got the USB in the glove box. Um, that's the one from the, the, that came with the unit itself. And the USB down there in, in the center console is connected to the head unit as well. 
but I'm gonna plug it into this one, uh, the USB drive into this one, and then start the update process from there. In the unit, I'm gonna go and update the firmware. So I got the, the flash drive plugged in down there. And let's see. So you gotta go down to system information, and then firmware update. Please connect it. Flash driver SD card containing only the update file, okay? Update file error. Great. Alright guys, sorry I'm out in the sun, but here it is. I'm, I'm using a different USB stick now. That's the USB number one. Uh, it just finished doing the reading, set, reading step, so let's hit start. Alright, there we go, it's going. The problem was that the old USB stick might have had some hidden files or something like that on it, but it wasn't allowing it wasn't allowing the the head unit to read off of it or something like that. Um, I did everything the same. The only folder that's in here is AVH18, I think it's called. But there's only a folder and that's it on the partition. So well, it says updated to 100 percent Well that was pretty quick if that's the case, but it's supposed to say something like push home button when it's done to restart it. So or maybe it does it automatically. Yeah, black screens during firmware updates. Don't you love that? Oh, all right, well, it's doing something. Oh, well, never mind. I guess it's uh, that was just the warm up. Alright. Yep, there we go. It's at 17% now, 18%. Uh, from the looks of this, it's going to take about 5 or 6 minutes maybe from the start to finish to get this, this fully updated. And after it's updated, I'm supposed to press on the screen somewhere over here to kind of turn on the, uh, the demo mode. So when you, when you get it, when it gets booted all the way back up to the home screen, you kind of just hold your finger down there until it says set on in the middle. So I'll go run through that once this is done. All right, we're coming up on 100% here. And let's see what happens. Update complete, press the home button to reset the product. That's the home button. Alright, after this I'm going to check the system information and see if it actually did get up updated like it said it was. Yep, 1.01. Alright, let's try to do that uh, little trick over here. Just pressing over there. Oh, there you go, set on. Alright, cool. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all you gotta do. So if you have the green wire grounded to the, uh, or just grounded to the black wire somewhere in the back of the unit, the green wire is the parking brake wire that's in the back of the Pioneer unit itself. I have the bypass in there. Like I said, you don't really need the bypass, but I got it for kind of feature proofing just in case that it, it is needed because it, the bypass does work on this, but it's not necessary if you just do that right there with the, the firmware update. But I'll take it out. We'll see if it actually works and lets me watch videos while I drive. Yes, it works. Yup, you don't got kids, you don't understand. Netflix, baby. Running off the iPhone. All right, yeah, so these guys are for real. This is the missing link right here. Here's the uh, that Motorola antenna kind of connector that plugs into the factory Toyota harness, which is that guy right there. And that's the only thing I was missing, so it was missing and you couldn't listen to the radio. It's sound coming out of the radio now, but let's see if it can tune anything. Oh, I hear something. Works. So 
sounds good too, but I don't wonder why there's no uh, no radio data on top here. Very last problem other than the video displaying on the screen itself. I forgot to hook up the uh, remote, well, antenna turn on for the antenna because this one apparently has an amplified antenna. So it's get, it's it gets radio, but it's a really poor reception. So you're just supposed to hook this up to the remote wire. So I'm just going to tap it into the remote wire on there and plug everything back in. And then I'm going to try and figure out the video signal sometime later. I gotta tap into a box under there, I think, to get the uh, reverse power, like a uh, power only on reverse. And then I gotta come back down to under here, underneath that kick panel on the passenger side, and tap the wire for the reverse camera, which appears up there right now, but I want it to appear on the screen itself. All right, internet, don't hate me for using that. But anyway, I got that one tapped into the remote wire now. It says uh, 12 volt and 300 milliamps, so that should be enough for that amplifier, I hope. Well, it works, guys. But it sounded pretty good before, so. All right, guys, so here's kind of the final, final AV 4400 NEX install. The only thing I gotta do left is tap the rear view camera because it appears on the screen up here, but it doesn't show up down here yet because I didn't plug in the inputs yet. But so far, I got wireless uh, Apple Apple CarPlay to work seamlessly. It works fine. Uh, I couldn't get Android Auto wirelessly working on my S9 Plus, uh, but I can use the Miracast screen imaging or the, the screen mirroring, and it shows up on the screen. And the bypass is working fine, so you can just drive and watch videos and whatever. And for the iPhone, you can't do that yet, so there's no Miracast kind of equivalent. So what you gotta do is, uh, see I got this cable down here, I'm running it underneath there. And that's going to, this is just a lightning cable, like a Apple lightning cable for iPhone 10. But it, underneath there, I got a HDMI cable adapter for the iPhone. And this is just an extension cable, so it's easier to plug in. So it, this extension cable plugs into an HDMI adapter that's underneath there with an HDMI cable attached to the back of the, um, the Pioneer unit here. So all you gotta do is hit the HDMI mode here and make sure that your Wi-Fi is off because if your Wi-Fi is on, it's gonna keep connecting to the Apple CarPlay. But if you turn your Wi-Fi off, like even momentarily, you, you'll be able to connect the HDMI through that Apple HDMI converter. And you want the original Apple converter because the other ones won't let you use like uh, Netflix and those kind of encrypted encrypted video sources so so far Android Auto wireless doesn't work for me on this phone but I can do Miracast just fine so that's that's even better and the iPhone Apple wireless Apple CarPlay works seamlessly and, and pretty fast uh, but you have to plug it in using the HDMI adapter to get any kind of screen mirroring capability to like watch videos and things like that on here anyway so far it's got it's a little bit glitchy but uh it's it's manageable it does